Next, we discuss the definition of the composition of a function. Suppose we have two functions f and g. So take note that f here is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to c. This is my function f and then g is a function from b to c. The composition of g with f is the new function g circle f so that's this one and it is defined by the following rule g circle f of a is equal to g of f of a so meaning to say we get our a get its image under f and then get the image of f of a under the function g. So that's g of f of a. And take note that the codomain, take note that when the codomain of f is not equal to the domain of g, this does not, if this, take note that when the codomain of f is not equal to the domain of g, these two do not go inside, then there is no composite function g circle f. So for example, we have a to be equal to the set 1, 2, 3, 4, b is 5, 6, 7, and c is 8, 9, 10, 11. We define the following functions f and g. What will now be the composition g circle f? So our G circle F would be the following elements. Take note that the first coordinates of G circle F will be 1, 2, 3, and 4 because our function G circle F is from A to C. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have 1 goes to 6, then applying G6 goes to 9, 2 goes to 5, and then applying G5 goes to 8, 3 goes to 7, and 7 goes to 10, and lastly 4 goes to 6, and 6 goes to 9. That will be the composition G circle F. And take note that F circle G is not defined. It's not even possible to get this because... Your G is from B to C, whereas your F is from A to B. The codomain of G is not the same as the domain of F. Suppose we have these two functions, F and G, defined by the following. We compute F circle G. This is possible because they both have the same domains and codomains and also G circle F, the images of X under F circle G. The image of X under F circle G is F of G of X, which is X squared. So that's X squared plus 1 and G circle F of X is equal to g of f of x, which is x plus 1, so therefore that is x plus 1 squared. And take note that we have just shown, take note that we have just seen that the composition of functions is not commutative. Now, what happens when we compose three functions? So, we have these three functions, A to B, B to C, and C to D. Take note that these two functions will now be equal. This is saying that composition of functions is associative. How do we show that these two functions are equal?
we have to show first that they have the same domain and same codomain. So, of course, we start with let f from a to b, g is from b to c. I'm just copying the premise here. The, what would be the domain and codomain of these two functions? Their domains are both equal to A and their codomains are both equal to D. Next, for the second part of the proof, we now show that they have the same images. So since the domain is from A, to D, we get an arbitrary element of the domain A. So we let A be an element of A. And then we need to show that, what is that again? HG circle F. H circle G circle F of A is equal to H circle G of F of A. So since we want to show an equality, we cannot manipulate both sides. We start with one side and go to the other side. So we can just say that from start starting from the left side we have H circle G circle F of A. It's just a series of computations. So we have by definition this means H circle G circle F of A. G circle F of A is G of F of A. And then we are now apply H. However, this H of G of F of A, I can write this as H circle G and then apply to f of a and this one here is now your h circle g circle f and then a so that proves it So next, we now discuss identity functions. What is an identity function? An identity function is just the function which maps every element of the set to itself. So if this is A, so it's a mapping from A to itself. And it maps every element of A to itself. So let's say that's A1, it gets mapped to A1. A2, it gets maps to A2. So for example, our set A is 1, 2, 3. 
what would be the function identity A. So as a set of ordered pairs, this will just be 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. All the elements of A gets mapped to itself. We can also write this as follows. The image of 1 is 1. The image of 2 is itself 2. And the image of 3 is 3. Now, what happens when we compose functions with identity functions? So here is a theorem. When we compose f with the identity function on set b, you get the same function f. When you compose the identity function on a with f, you get the same function f here. So that is the reason why it's called the identity function. So it's like the identity in the set of real numbers, right? When you multiply a number with 1, you still get the number itself. Now, take note that we have different subscripts here because the composition of f and identity function on b here is from, we're starting from the one on the right side, f. So that's from a to b. So therefore, the identity function should start on b. And then this one over here, you're starting with the identity function on a. So that's A to A, and of course now your F is from A to B, just to make sure that the codomain will be equal to the domain of the second function. We are actually showing here that this two equalities are the same, so therefore I will just prove one. This is my 1. And 2 will be left as exercise. So again, I will show that these two are the same. To show that two functions are equal, first look at their domain and codomain. They both have this composition here has domain A and codomain B, and that is also true for the function f. Next, we will now show that they must have the same images. So that is, we will show that identity circle F of, where are we going to get this element? This is coming from A. This is the same as F of A. The green part is not part of the proof. I'm just doing this so that you know what where we are going. So you can say observe that this image here, by definition, is identity function on B of F of A. But where is F of A? F of A is an element of B, correct? Because F is a function from A to B. So the images are inside the set B. And the identity function on B maps every element of B to itself. So therefore, f of A gets mapped to f of A. And that is exactly what we want to show. This is equal to this. So for part 2, that is left as exercise. We now define the restriction of a function. So suppose we have 
a function f from a to b Now, we let's click F to a subset of S. So, let's say that this is my S. When we just restrict the domain of F to S, we say that that is the restriction of the function on S. So, basically, it just maps. So, for example, here, this is A under the function so, for example, we have an element S here inside capital S. Let's make it small s. It just gets mapped to F of S. So, this image here will be the image of F restricted to... Maybe I should have used another... Instead of S, I should use a different letter. Let's just call it A. If A is an element of S, we know that the function F takes it to F of A. This is the image also of F restricted to S of A. So basically, this and this are just the same except that they have different domains. So for example, F is the function... In, in terms of ordered pairs, if f is this function, your first elements, your first coordinates are the elements of a and the second entries will be coming from b, then here, all the a's here will be coming from capital A, but for the restricted function, all the first entries will just be coming from s. So, for example, our function f is this one, f of x equals x squared, and s is the set of non-negative numbers. What is f restricted to? s, and our s is non-negative, so that's 0 to infinity. So, what would be the image of x? It still be equal to x squared.